players threatening strikes. But we're not prepared to continue to negotiate on the basis of this document. The pressure is mounting on this gentleman, Mark Taylor. That's out. Despite series wins against the West Indies and South Africa, Mark Taylor's own horrible slump threatened his place and the stability of his side in England. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't want to be a passenger on this tour. I want to play better cricket. And he did. Saving his career with a dogged century at Edgebaston. There it is, well played into the gap at Cargo and listen to the crowd. A test Australia lost before retaining the Ashes 3-2. Sid, Millie and Ollie are on the Olympic team. As is women's water polo, convincing the hierarchies it should be on the schedule. But former Grand Prix boss Mal Hemmerling was dropped. This Olympic dream is greater than any single individual. Bloodletting common for the Games organisers. But at Homebush Bay, construction without obstruction for the state-of-the-art facilities. Beaten by Atlanta for the Olympic centenary in 1996, the home of the modern Games, Athens, secured 2004. By then, it's anyone's guess what drug cocktails will ensure another set of unbelievable feats. As they went faster, higher and stronger at home, the Chinese faced more drug abuse allegations. But our own Olympic boss had a warning. You know, we can't be sure that we're clean. With athletes such as potential Olympic bobsledders caught out, Australia treads a tenuous path. I have a contract, yeah. And is Even it more tenuous until Athletics Australia backed down on its appointment of former East German coach and accused Stasi spy, Dr. Eckhart Arbeit. It seems to me that Athletics Australia have picked the wrong time to appoint a coach from a disgraced system. The swimming pool, a place for better prospects. Top of the class, Michael Klim, who smashed freestyle and butterfly records. Michael Klim! Wow. Can you believe that? There's a lot of things that I can still improve, which is uh, very encouraging. And a new era in the 1500. Kieran Perkins outshone by Grant Hackett. I'm, you know, totally very wrapped with the result. Also wrapped, our team of the year. Australia on top of the world in women's hockey. And I must admit, Rick didn't think that we would probably play this well. There it is, a win for the ages. 21-year-old Tiger Woods rewrote history, an extraordinary 12-stroke winner at the Masters, becoming the first black to win a major and youngest recipient of the green jacket. I said last night, this is going to be your, probably the toughest round you've ever had to play in your life. But if, if you play it well and if you be yourself, it'll be the most rewarding round you've ever played in your life. He wasn't unstoppable. Greg Norman re-emerging as world number one. A beautiful golf shot by Greg Norman. He has... His biggest win in 97, the World Series. His consistency matched by Carrie Webb. Her sensational 63 at the British Open, one of the greatest rounds in women's golf. I can't believe it. She goes to nine under par for this round. Uh, yeah, mate, very ready, hopefully. Bubbling Brisbane really was ready, as the strikers took the national soccer title against Sydney United. The underdog's success pattern continued through the winter. That will do! Adelaide's Crows upsetting an anticipated St Kilda fairy tale. Sydney embraced Aussie rules as never before. Sellouts even when the Swans were losing. The SCG full houses partly because of the great divide in rugby league. League's remaining fans enduring persistent sniping and year-long compromise speculation. I'd say we're, you know, we're talking about days, not weeks. Saving grace for the ARL. A thrilling grand final won by the Newcastle Knights. As with the Crows, a whole region was revitalised by football heroics. More predictable, Brisbane's Super League dominance. Watch this, bang, bang, bang. The Broncos inevitably taking the inaugural competition and the year's promotional flop, the World Club Challenge. Away. A promotional and economic bonanza unfolded when Rugby Union took the Bledisloe Cup to the MCG. 90,000 turned up, but the match served to highlight the All Blacks' world dominance. He has the front running. The Wallabies also suffering humiliating losses across the Tasman and in South Africa. It's been a 
a fairly difficult few months for Greg. Coach Greg Smith with nowhere to hide after the Tri-Nations. First one, I thought we played very, very well. Terry Venables came and decided he wanted to stay. The Socceroos breezing through the Oceania World Cup qualifiers. After an agonising wait, an Asian opponent, first leg Tehran. Australia holding on 1-1 in front of 128,000. Now a tantalising step from making it to the finals for the first time in a generation. To the MCG and 2-0. Had Australia ever seen anything like it? Back across! Off the bar! Or felt two such cruel sporting blows as Iran's brace of goals? Oh, the flag's down! It's an equaliser for Iran! Not getting there is a big setback. But no, it won't, the initiative won't die. Go, 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 go. A grandstand climax to the Formula One season at the European Grand Prix. Of the top two, whoever finished ahead would take the title. German Michael Schumacher's Ferrari and Canadian Jacques Villeneuve's Williams engaging. 19 laps out. The German at fault and out of business. The way he hit me was really, really hard. You know, either Michael had his, old, his eyes closed or uh, somehow his hand slid on the steering or something. To 500cc and Michael Doohan taking the chequered flag for Honda in 13 of 16 races. The Australian securing his fourth world title despite failure at Phillip Island. Michael Jordan sports highest money earner but Canadian Donovan Bailey pocketed the quickest $2 million. In the 150 metre search for the fastest man on the planet, Michael Johnson conceded. Bailey will win it easily. Johnson has pulled up lane. At the World Championships, a new 100 metre elite. Americans Morris Green. Green's got them. Green's done it. And Marion Jones. Peter is coming hard. Jones has won. Medalists Tim Forsyth, Joanna Stone, Steve Monaghetti and Louise Savage provided typical courage. But Cathy Freeman eclipsed anything an Australian had done in the world titles since Rob Di Costello's 1983 marathon. Gold in the 400. She's just in front of the Aussie. I think she's got them. Miles Clark comes at her. Cathy hanging on. Yes, she's done it. She's won it. You know, there are times when I didn't think I was going to make it, so it's been pretty emotional. <laughs> Barely raising a sweat, Martina Hingis dominated women's tennis. And Pete Sampras sits aloft as the men's number one. He's been there for four years. But a decade since Pat Cash scaled the heights at Wimbledon, Pat Rafter swept to victory at the US Open. In one incredible year, he provided a fresh chapter in our proud tennis history. Leaping more than 60 spots in the world rankings to number two. Cashy did it, and I thought it was pretty cool. Come on, sing Matilda with me. Well, as usual, some sports missed out. Our apologies to them for sharing your thoughts on 1997. Good night and a happy new year. Next week, a compelling look inside the world of the suicide bombers who've helped bring the Middle East peace process to a halt. That's next Monday on Four Corners Summer Dispatches. Coming up tonight, Red Dwarf.